My name is Hannah Al-Awadi. I'm half Egyptian, half Moroccan. And I'm mommy of two. I support local initiatives in Egypt on my social media platform. And the hashtag is Hannah Goes Local. started off when the dollar crashed our Egyptian pound. Everybody was complaining. And so I decided that this was the time for us to look into designers that are locally produced or designers that are from Egypt. If we couldn't shed light on them now, then we had a big issue. And we have a lot of incredible talent. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah, and it's been amazing. Honestly, I didn't realize that the hashtag would create such a buzz. I was asked to go and speak at AUC to the students, which was incredible. And at the Creative Industry Summit also on the hashtag and why I started the hashtag. It all started with just one picture and I never ever realized that it would come this way. Definitely. I want to achieve way more. I want to create a Shop Hannah Goes local platform that I'm working on, where you can actually go and shop all the pieces that I'm promoting. I also have been contacted by potential investors to invest in a few of these local brands to grow and take them abroad and stuff and create like business plans for them and do the whole shebang for them. I would love to see that happen. When I first opened up my Instagram profile to be public, it was because I was designing jewelry and so I would put all my images on there for orders just to market my jewelry line. And then I realized that they were not just interested in my jewelry, they were interested in masalan, what I'm wearing or where I'm taking my kids or an image of a, like a plate somewhere that looked pretty. At the time I had moved to Dubai, I was like, okay, this is like the perfect place for me to try to make it if I ever want to start getting paid posts or working with brands or whatever it is. I got to do a shoot in Dubai and got dressed up and makeup and hair. It was such a pretty shoot. Honestly, and I got to do with other influencers, if you may. I don't know. It's just not me. To be honest with you, I always felt like I love social media, but in a picture and posing, dressing up, that's just not me. You know, I wasn't able to do it. So then I decided, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. Forget it. And then I moved back to Cairo and I started this whole hashtag Hannah Goes Local thing about three, four months ago, I would say. Now when I post, I feel like there's a meaning. It's not like an empty post. I'm not that type who knows how to look at a camera and smile and then post it. What am I waiting for? Am I waiting for a like or for a follow? What am I waiting for? I didn't get the point. I now feel people are interested because it's real okay I'm I, I don't get paid for the Hannah Goes Local posts I actually do it for free because I want to help and I have a platform to help them with so I want to use it well it's what I really like I don't just post random stuff I post things that I've tried and tested things that I actually like things that I would wear and so it makes me comfortable when I'm taking the picture I just feel like it's because it's real they are following obviously right now everything is online the way to go is online. I do definitely think that this whole influencers craze is gonna die out. And if you're smart enough, you'd create a business out of it while you're at the top before you die out. So what I would like to do is definitely create a business out of it. What it is, I have no idea yet. I mean, I have a platform, it's not so big, but I have a voice to these 40, almost 40K people. I feel that I could make use of making something that will last longer than just a picture. I'm true to myself. I'm true to my followers. I'm not trying to sell them, yalla, go buy, yalla. I got offered to do a lot of things that I actually turned down because, first of all, I don't want to position myself that way. I don't want to position myself in a way where the followers are going to realize in the, that she's getting paid for this or she's getting paid for that. Because once you reach that, khalas, you have no voice anymore. I really am, in general, to myself, with my friends, with my family. I am a very real person. I am exactly what you see. And if I have something to say, I'm going to say it. And so I assume that my followers have picked up on that and are trusting me. The only kind of initiative that I would love to be a part of is something to do with making a difference in Egypt. You know, it could even be me. I have no idea who's going to do this. But somebody who would be interested in somehow getting Egypt to be a better place, whether it's cleaning up the streets or it's painting buildings or cleaning up your area. I mean, there's 101 things we can do. And all of us want to see the change, but we're not really doing anything about that. And I would love to join a movement so that the change can actually happen. Because if I do it on my own, I'm never going to get anywhere. And that's definitely a hashtag. I would follow because then I would learn from others what they're doing in their areas or how they're doing this or they can give me tips and ideas on how I could be a change within my small community. That's something I would love to see.
Everyone's complaining about the traffic. Why not fix up our transportation system so that we could all use it? I mean, if I felt safe to use the transportation, I would use it. Whether it's autobus al amal ID, even the metro. The metro is not that bad, but I don't think I'd feel safe to get on there alone. That's something we could start off with, and it would do a lot of good for the rest of Cairo, for example. Because the traffic's just insane. I absolutely love social media and I'm online a lot. Having said that, it scares me to hell. I would never post, unless I'm in like in a very, very public place, I would never link it, you know, where you can put ad location, unless I've been there and left, or if I'm there and there's like a big thing going on. It's, it's scary. People can track you that so easily. It's so scary. Like even with my kids, I used to post more with my kids in the images. Now I don't. I post a lot less. When it comes to my kids, I'm going The success story of Huda Beauty, obviously. Just the success story. It's not about what she's posting. It's about where she started off and where she's at now. Like from a business perspective. Out of Dubai, there's Karen was then. Very, very pretty. And she's very lifestyle, kids and husband. I enjoy looking at her pictures. Kiara, also, I think is amazing. I was very loud, very loud. I mean, always had to be put center of attention with my family. Going up into my teens, early teens, I was a tomboy. I used to buy my clothes from the boys' section. Slowly, slowly, you know, you grow up, you start to be a girl, you start to like somebody and you want to start making yourself look better or prettier or dress cuter. I still believe that my style is a little bit tomboyish. I'm always in baggy jeans and sneakers. I was a tough girl. I, I still am, I think I am. <laughs> Habiba, definitely her hair. And I have to remind her all the time because I know at a young age, she's okay with it. But once she starts to grow, when she's like 10, 11, I'm sure she's going to hate her hair. So I just want to imprint it in her head that it's special and that she's special with her hair. She's extremely spontaneous. Kedah. She's exactly like me. She goes along with anything that's happening. She'll get along with you, with somebody that's younger. You know, she'll get along with anybody. She's really funny. Zin. Zin, uh, <laughs> Zin always has something beautiful to say to me. He's like mommy's boy. Mommy, you're beautiful, mommy. So he just, I drool over him. He's also hilarious. Yeah, I mean, everything. <laughs> I love my freckles. Again, when I was younger, I hated my freckles. Because you just, you go into your pre-teens and you, you want to fit in like everybody else. And now I'm so happy that I have my freckles. I'm glad that I actually don't fit in. I love my freckles. They make who I am. If you ask my mom, I remember at a really young age, I used to sing and my mom was like, you have a really good voice. I'm like, I know, thank you. And I would sing and I'd be really excited. I get really shy to sing in front of people or I get really shy to be put in the spotlight, believe it or not. Although, Yanni, I put my, post my pictures out there, but when I'm in front of the camera and there's people around me, I just, I get shy. It scares me. Yeah, I, I just enjoy singing. Be who you are. Stop following and do not believe everything you see on social media. It's not real. We pose, we put makeup, wear hair. It's not real. The whole thing is not real. Be comfortable with who you are, because obviously who you are is enough. Follow your dreams, do whatever it is you want to do. Don't look for acceptance. You will only reach where you want to be when you follow your heart and your dreams. Boys, be nice to the girls. If you're not nice, they'll find you. La la, it's the yoy. You and me, we used to be together. I can't believe this could be the end.